This is I'm Stark, and in this video we will be looking at standard integrals. So first of all, we will look at trigonometric integration. And like trigonometric differentiation, which I've already done a video on, it follows a standard pattern, yet this time the pattern will be in the reverse order. So therefore, we start off here with sine x. If we integrate this, whereas if you differentiate it, it would go to cos x, this is going to go to minus cos x. then integrate minus cos x. What we're going to then get is minus sine x. And then if you integrate this, you're going to get cos x. This goes all the way back around here. When you integrate cos x, you're going to go back to sine x. And this is different because if you did differentiated sine x, you would get cos x. Differentiate this, you would get sine x. Then you would get minus minus um, cos x. And then you would get sine x in the end. So it's just um, an, the different way around. So here we have a question. And this one asks for to, us to integrate sec squared 5x. And this is another trigonometric identity. And we know that tan x differentiates to give sec squared x. So this means that sec squared x would integrate to give tan x plus c. So that means that when we're integrating this, what we're going to have is one fifth. Now it's one fifth because we have this five here. So we have to do one over this. And this is by inspection. And then it's going to be one fifth tan 5x. But then we also have to remember the plus c, so plus that constant, which we have when we integrate something. So the next thing to look at is exponential integration. And we know that e to the x differentiates to give e to the x. So this means that when you integrate e to the x, you are also going to get e to the x. We also know that ln x differentiates to give 1 over x. So this means that if you integrate 1 over x, you're going to get ln modulus x. Now we have a modulus in here because we have to remember that you cannot put a negative into ln. So this means that it will always be positive. And it is fairly important that you do remember this modulus. So now we have a couple of questions which are involving this exponential integration. And the first one is asking us to integrate e to the 2x plus 3. So in order to do this, we're going to have to... divide it by the 2x. So that means that instead of normally what it would be is timing it by it, so we'd normally have, if we were differentiating this, we'd have 2e to the 2x plus 3. By integrating it, we're going to have half e to the 2x plus 3. Then this one here, we have um, a ln. So it's going to go to ln something. But again, we have it over 2x. So because we have this 2 here, that is going to go to half ln modulus 2x plus 1. So if we had a 3x, for example, here, then we would get a third ln 2x plus 1. So this final question is asking us to find the area of the curve cos squared x when it's bounded between pi over 2 and 0. But in order to do this, we will have to find an easier way of expressing cos squared x so that we can integrate it. In order to do this, we're going to use some trigonometric identities. So we know that cos 2x is equal to cos squared x minus 
minus sine squared x. And this will just be some deriving now. Obviously, if you can remember all of them, that's great, but it's good just to be able to derive it again from this starting point to work out what cos squared x actually is. But that means that cos squared x is equal to cos 2x plus sine squared x. We can re-say this, we can um, say that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cos squared x. So therefore cos squared x is equal to cos 2x plus 1 minus cos squared x. That means that we're going to get 2 cos squared x is equal to 1 plus cos 2x and therefore cos squared x is equal to a half plus a half cos 2x. So now we have a simpler way of expressing cos squared x, which we can integrate. So let's now integrate that over here. 1 half plus a half cos 2x. So, so when integrating this, what we're going to get is half integrated is going to be half x. And then the more difficult part is when we're trying to integrate half cos 2x. And first of all, we know that cos x is going to differentiate to give sine x. So we know this is going to be something sine x. However, as we have this 2 before here, it's going to be half divided by 2. And that is, again, what we were learning about at the start of this video. And this is its practical um, application. So it's going to be a quarter, because half divided by 2 is a quarter sine, and it's going to stay 2x. Now, if the question was to finish here, we would be adding a c. However, we ha now have to add in limits, and that is why we're not adding in a c, because the, limit, uh, the c will cancel out anyway because of these limits. So now we can write it as half x plus a quarter sine 2x and this is bounded between pi over 2 and 0. So therefore what we're going to have to do is put sub in pi over 2 then sub in 0 I'm going to do the 1 subbed in with pi over 2 take away the 1 subbed in with 0. So when we sub in pi over 2 we're going to get half x and half times pi over 2 is simply going to be a quarter pi. Then what we're going to have is a quarter sine 2x. So if we do 2 times by pi over 2, we're going to get pi. And sine pi is equal to 0. So therefore, anything times by 0 is equal to 0. So that's going to be 0. And then minus, when we put 0 in here, sine 0 there is going to be equal to 0 again. So we have 0 there. And obviously, half times by 0 is also 0. So that means that it's going to be minus 0. So therefore, our final answer is a quarter pi. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.